Oh, hello, we're back again. I was just about to have a drink of water. Now, water is fantastic. It's a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful drink, and it's so healthy for you. But sometimes we add things to the water to make it more tasty, like a little bit of juice, right? But how much juice do we actually add to the water, right? Do I add the same amount of water as the same amount of juice? Or do I put a little less juice and more water? Okay. Well, obviously, if I put a lot of juice, the same amount of water and the same amount of juice, I'm going to have a very, very, very sweet drink. But if I just put a little bit of juice to this amount of water, I could have quite an enjoyable drink here. Now, folk, that whole combination of how much juice do I put to the amount of water I've got, we call all that terminology as a ratio, okay? So that's exactly what we're going to be doing in this segment. We're going to be looking at ratios, proportion, and rate. Cool? Let's start with ratios, okay? So what are ratios? And well, I've just explained it with the use of water, isn't it? It's when I'm comparing two quantities together, okay? So one part of this to eight parts of that. So, for example, when I buy juice, when I buy my juice bottle, it'll say, use a ratio of one is to three. In other words, for one part of juice, I've got to have three parts of water, okay? If I have so much juice, I've got to have three times that amount of water. That's what ratio is all about. When we're comparing things, or the same sort of things, and we're using different numbers. So we want one part of this to so many parts of that. And you'll get the idea as we do some examples. Now, first of all, let's have a look here. Ratios can be written in three different ways can be written 3 dot 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 2 or it can be written as 3 to 2. It can also be written as a fraction 3 over 2. So 3 to 2 is can be written as 3 dot dot 2, 3 to 2 or 3 over 2. Right, let's start applying all this knowledge. Just a few more facts. Always remember to simplify a ratio. 5 to 10 can be written as 1 is to 2. Why? Because when I get 5 is to 10, I'm going to ask myself myself, can 5 be divided by a number and can 10 also be divided by that number? So what can go into 5 and what can go into 10? Well, 5 can go into 5, and 5 can go into 10. 5 goes into 5 once, and 5 goes into 10 twice. So my ratio is 1 is to 2. Now, I'm going to teach you how to cheat, okay, using your calculator. Because your calculator can simplify your ratios. Let's have a look at that. If I write the number 5, now remember, a ratio I can also write as a fraction. So 5 over 10, watch what happens when I push equals. I get 1 over 2, okay? So 5 to 10 is the same as 1 over 2. But just remember, if my question gives it to me in this format, my answer must also be in that format. So what about 30 to 90? So what will go into 30 and what will go into 90? So you may look at that and say, well, let's divide both of them by 10. So 30 divided by 10 is 3, 90 divided by 10 is 9. Can anything go into 3 and into 9? Well, yes, 3 can. 3 goes into 3 once, and 3 goes into 9 three times. So my answer, 1 is to 3. Again, should we do that cheating? Let's use the calculator. I'm going to say my first answer or question was, what is 30 to 90. Push equals, and there it is, 1 over 3. Okay, but remember we're not writing it 1 over 3, we're going to write 1 is to 3. Why? Because the question gave it to us as 30 to 90. All right, 
Great stuff. Let's move on. Let us simplify the ratio of 5 to 10. Okay. Again, we can do that by saying 5 will go into 5 and 5 will go into 10. And my ratio will be 1 is to 2. Now, let us simplify the ratio 30 to 60. What will go into 30 and what will go into 60? Well, 30 will go into both. 30 goes into 30 once and 30 goes into 60 twice. Folk, what do you notice? I notice that 5 to 10 simplified is 1 is to 2. And 30 to 60 is also 1 is to 2. In other words, 5 to 10 is exactly the same as 30 is to 60. It's just that we're using bigger numbers. So ratios, no matter what the numbers we're using, if we keep the ratios the same, the outcome will be exactly the same. Right? So, again, let's use this whole example of my water. If I said the ratio of juice to water must be 1 is to 3, if that's the amount of water I'm using, then the juice I'm using is a third of that. If I were to uh, decrease the water, let's decrease the water. That was good. Now we've decreased the water. We only got that amount of water. But my ratios are so 1 is to 3. So if I've used this amount of water, my amount of uh, juice I'm putting in is going to be a third of that. Okay. Now if I mix this correctly, and if I've mixed the other one where I had so much water correctly, the juices are going to taste exactly the same. They're not going to be sweeter, the one's not going to be sweeter than the other, or a lot more diluted than the other. They're going to taste the same. Why? Because the ratio 1 is to 3 is the same ratio for that amount of water or that amount of water. Makes sense, doesn't it? Okay, so let's look at this. A recipe for pancakes uses 3 cups of flour and 2 cups of milk. So the ratio of flour to milk must be, how much flour did we have? We used three cups. How many cups of milk did we use? We used two cups of milk. So my ratio flour to milk is three is to two. What happens if the question was, what is the ratio of milk to flour? Now it's a different thing, isn't it? Because now they want the ratio of milk first and then flour. So my ratio, if it was, let's write this down here, if they asked you what is milk to flour, then milk is two cups and flour is three. Now my ratio is two is to three. And focus, important that we get that order right. Okay? Again, imagine if we had the juice ratio and it said one part juice to three parts water. Imagine if we said, ah, oh, it doesn't matter if we mix that up. Let's use one part water and three parts juice. Oh my giddy aunt, you take one sip of that and you would have diabetes straight away. It would be so sweet, it would be absolutely gross. So it's important that we get those ratios the right way around. Okay, so now we've got the ratio of flour to milk being three is to two. Now if you need to make pancakes for many people, you might need four times the quantity. So how much flour and milk do you need? All right. So I've got a recipe here. And I'm trying to make pancakes. And the amount of pancakes I have is three cups of flour to two cups of milk. But suddenly now I get a whack of visitors. And I realize, sure, I'm going to need to make a whack of pancakes. A lot of pancakes. Right? So what do I do? Do I use three cups of flour, two cups of milk, mix it all together with the other ingredients, and then make those pancakes? When I'm finished making those pancakes, do another three cups of flour, another two cups of milk, mix it together, and then make those pancakes? And then, no, I can just make one batch, but make it four times bigger. 
So, whereas before I used three cups of flour, I want four times. So, I'm going to multiply it by four. So, suddenly now I need 12 cups of flour. Okay, not flowers, just flour. And I use two cups of milk. I'm going to do four times as much. I'm going to use eight cups of milk. Now, folks, if I use that recipe, or if I use that recipe, my pancake should taste exactly, exactly the same. Why? Because I increased the flour by the same ratio that I increased the milk. So it's going to make no difference to the taste. It's going to taste exactly the same. Okay, next one. If there are 80 learners who travel by bus and 120 learners who travel by taxi, then we have a ratio of 80 to 120. Okay? In other words, my ratio is 80 to 120. And the question now says simplify that ratio. In other words, what will divide into 80 and what will divide into 120? Well, I kind of know that because I know that 40 will go into both of them. Okay? And 40 will go into 80 twice and 40 will go into 120 three times. So simplified, it's 2 is to 3. But let's pretend we didn't know that. How would we solve it? We'd solve it by cheating with our calculator. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say, right, I've got 80 over 120, because that's another way I can write a ratio, and my answer is 2 over 3. But remember, I'm writing it as 2 is to 3. Why? Because the question gave it to me, 80 to 120. Right. This is good stuff, isn't it? A company has a total of 150 employees, and 25 of them are managers. What is the ratio of managers to non-managers? Now, there's a bit of a trick to this question, okay? The guy who set this question was trying to trick us a little bit. Not nice of him, but we kind of smart, so we've picked up the problem straight away. Have you seen what the problem is? Let's have a look here. What is the ratio of managers... to non-managers. Okay, now, we know there are 150 employees. We told 25 are managers, so there are 25 managers. So how many are non-managers? Now, I know what you're going to do. You are going to say, right, there are 150 employees, 25 of them are managers. So if 25 are managers and there are a total of 150 how many are non-managers well it's quite simple i got 150 take away those 25 and i'm left with 125 people that are not managers now what is the ratio ratio is 25 to 125 but remember what i said we have got to simplify our ratios so 25 to 125 Let's simplify it. If we're not sure, okay, we know 25 goes into both of those, and 25 will go once, and into 125 will go five times. But if we don't know that, all we're going to do is we're going to cheat and use our calculator again. So I'm going to say, cool, I got 25 over 125, and my answer, 1 is to 5. And there it is. 1 is to 5. A grandmother wants to share 800 rand between her three grandchildren in the ratio of the ages, 20 years, 15 years, and 5 years. How much should they each get? So here's a granny. Wonderful. And grannies are wonderful things, aren't they? Oh, they're so nice. They always want to give you a cuddle and a hug. And the nice thing is as well, they also want to give you sweets and sometimes money. So this granny has got 800 rand, and she says, you know what, I've got 800 rand, I want to give this money to my grandchildren. But, I also know 
that a 20-year-old needs more money than a 5-year-old. Why? Because a 20-year-old's got to catch a taxi, go to work, or go to university, or go to a Technicon. They need more money. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this 800 Rand and I'm going to divide it up into ratios, okay, according to their age. In other words, I'm going to divide this up 20 to 15 to 5. So my oldest grandson is going to get 20 parts of that money. My middle grandson is going to get 15 parts, and I'll shame the baby grandson's only going to get five parts of that 800 rand. Guys, how many parts are there to this money? Well, if this one's getting 20, that one's getting 15, and that one's getting five, there are 40 parts that have to be shared out. So what I've got here is I've got 800 rand, and I'm going to divide that by 40. Why? Because 20 plus 15 plus 5 is 40. So we say, right, 800, and we're going to divide that by 40. 800, divide that by 40, and I get an answer of 20 rand. So every part is 20 rand. So let's have a look. The guy that gets 20 parts has got 20 parts, and each part being 20 rand. The guy is 15 years old is getting 15 parts, and each part is 20 rand. Oh, shame. And the little grandson, he's only getting five parts, and each part is 20 rand. So now, we're just going to take out our calculator and do this, aren't we? We're going to say, cool. So we want to work out what is 20 times 20. And 20 times 20 is 400. So the oldest grandson is getting 400 bucks. How cool is that? The other guy, he's only getting 15 parts. And each part being 20, 15 times 20, he's getting 300 rand. And that tiny little, little grandson, five years old, he's getting five times 20, which we know is 100. So oldest grandson, 400. Middle one, 300. Baby one, 100. Now, what do you notice about these numbers? 400 plus 300 plus 100 gives me 800 rand. And folk, that's how I know I've done the sum correctly, because I had 800 rand that had to be shared out. Okay, now, where do we use all these ratios? We use them when we're working out different quantities to find the total number of parts in a ratio, find the total quantity, find the quantity of one part, uh, Find equivalent ratios. In other words, 1 is to 2 is the same as what is to what. Okay, so we can use ratio in a number of ways, and those kind of questions can be asked in a number of ways. Quickly, let's end with this. There are 23 nurses in a hospital and 7,567 patients. How many patients does each nurse have to care for? So we're going to say, right, nurse to patients. We got 23 nurses and we got 7,567 patients. So one nurse needs to look after how many patients. Now folk, how did we get this 23 to become one? We divided it by 23. So what are we going to do here? We're going to divide 7,567 by 23. So let's have a look at this. We're going to say 7,000 567, divide that by 23, and we get an answer of 329. Love ratios. And again, please understand, ratios gets used in all our sections. You'll find ratios being used in our finance section. It'll be used in our maps, okay, especially when we start dealing with scale. Right? So it comes up in all these wonderful little sections. So it even gets used in your section of measurement. Got to understand ratio. Folks, that's it from me.